this is a little demo of how to update a web service data control once the web service actually changes. So this is our web service. Uh, it's a simple Java class annotated for web service enablement and it's running over here. Now let's create a new project where we're going to consume this web service. So we'll do a regular web ADF project and just create a couple of instances of this web service because what I want to show you is that when you create a web service data control um, you give it a name so we'll call one test with copy okay and we'll paste the WSDL address and we'll keep this checkbox the copy with the locally in here then we'll just run through the wizard move everything to the right click finish that's our first web service data control and then we'll create another one web service data control and call this one test no copy so in this one we're actually not going to copy the WSDL locally so it's still going to point to this URL over here but other than that we'll continue in the same way as before so now we have those two data controls they are available here and you can watch them in the data control DCX file you can actually expand them and look at their property. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to show you is that from here you can also change things. So for example, if you have an argument to a method like the set my depths parameter and you have parameters that you're passing to it, you can click the edit and you can actually do things like change the UI hint for one of the parameters. So let's call this one amp name. Okay, so we can do this over here and we can do the same thing for the other instance over here okay click edit name like that All right so as you can see those were created in separate xml files that are basically metadata on top of your web service now let's actually go and change our web service. So we'll take this method, the same move method, and we're going to just add another parameter to this method. So we'll do something like that, add another parameter, call it J, um, compile this and rerun our web service. So now the WSDL that you'll access will have the new method signature. Now let's go back into our uh, application that we created. Now as you'll see here in our data control, the same move right now only has one parameter because nobody told it that the service changed. Um, if you want the service to change, you can do two things depending on how you created your web service. If you created your web service without copying the WSDL locally, okay, you can just open the data control DCX um, locate the data control, right click on it and choose update. When you do this we go over, read the new WSDL and now the test with no copy you can see now we have two parameters here. Okay. This won't work if you actually copied the WSDL locally because if you do update we're going to try and read the local copy of the WSDL which hasn't changed so the test with copy even after you do an update doesn't actually update. So the way to resolve this is basically go back and recreate the web service data control. Okay, so we're going to create the web service data control. I'm going to give it the same name. Okay. Point to so point to the same with with the location. Okay, we can keep it as copy so it will basically override. When you click next, it will tell you there's already one. Do you want to update it? And you're going to say yes. Okay, and again, complete the web service data control. And now when you go into the test with copy, you'll have the two parameters. So that's how you update something. One thing to note, of course, um, all the changes we did to parameters, for example, the employee name, if you click the edit, those changes are still here okay because this is the nice thing about ADF and the usage of metadata or oh, basically what you're seeing here is kind of an aspect of MDS this is kept in a 
separate file from the actual web service definition and applied on top of it. So those changes would keep uh, uh, updated. Um, one thing to note, when you're doing those changes, if you're already using the web service in other places, we don't know to do those changes automatically for you, so it's not exactly a complete refactoring. Right. So one more thing that people might need to do is actually change where the web service is coming from. Okay, especially when you're moving from development to production, the server where your web service is running might be on a different IP address or a different name. To do that, what you'll need to do is extend your application resources and locate the file called Connection XML. If you open it in your editor, you'll see the address of your server hard-coded over here, and you can just move this from, right now it's my local host, to the actual server where the service is located, and you can see this for both our web services. So that's another type of configuration you might need to do on your web service. And that should get you um, up and running with web services, even if they update their location or update their uh, signature.